So moving on from that uh, panel looking at advertising, uh, programmatic advertising, how to target audiences, and building on some of the themes that we looked at earlier in the day around engaging audiences in a multi-screen world on multiple devices. Um, now I'd like to drill down and focus particularly on mobile and how mobile apps, communications apps, and messaging apps are really changing the mobile and the media landscape. And through integrating content and commerce services, they're threatening a new wave of disruption in the mobile industry. And this disruption means lots of competition, not just in mobile, but in over-the-top services like video, communications, and mobile operators. And what we're seeing is everyone is competing in different ways through communications, through content, through commerce. And it's in creating very different business models from companies occupying the same space. What's driving this really is the scale of these over-the-top ecosystems. Messaging apps and communications apps claimed more than 3 billion users, counting users of multiple services at the end of last year. What you can see to the left of this chart is that Facebook really is the dominant player through its Messenger app and also through the acquisition of WhatsApp. It really has the global scale that others can't match. But there are strong regional players. WeChat in China, backed by Tencent, claims an audience of over 500 million active users. There are strong players in Korea, Kakao Talk, and in Japan, Line is one of the big players. And they're really the driving force of integrating communications, content through games, in some cases music and video, and also commerce for payments, for buying physical goods and services. There are also other smaller players which may target a more youth audience, or regional players like Hike in India, which is following a similar strategy. And we can clearly see the disruptive effect these guys are having on mobile operators. The promise of free and low-cost communications has had a really negative impact on the core voice and messaging revenues of mobile operators in Europe and elsewhere in the world. But mobile disruption is nothing new. We've seen years of technological and business model innovation, which have fundamentally shifted the dynamics of the mobile industry. You can see how Apple, through the rise of the smartphone, has overtaken Nokia to become one of the leading smartphone makers in the world. And this disruption doesn't just affect the device landscape, it also affects how content is consumed, how content is distributed, and the business models for operators and content companies. And you can see here, though, that just this disruption does not mean that companies are making more money and that over-the-top companies are taking revenues away from operators and replacing it for themselves. By offering free and low-cost communications, they're actually undermining the business model of operators but their revenue opportunity is more limited. We counted the revenues of the top five global OTT messaging apps last year, and it was around $3 billion, which to put into some context is less than what mobile operators make from offering voice messaging and data services in Belgium. So even though there's a global scale with those companies on the right, the revenue, the revenue um, generation is not matched at all. So what are they doing to monetize? First, content initially through offering personalization, stickers, and ways to enhance the messaging experience, which is a fairly lucrative business for these companies. Then they moved into games, which has always been the most um, profitable or the most lucrative mobile media category, generating significant revenue over a billion dollars from Tencent's WeChat, hundreds of millions of dollars from Line and Kakao Talk. Music is also a key part of this uh, picture. Line and Kakao Talk both offer music services which drive engagement, but also monetization through advertising and premium services. But video is playing a very important role as well. Line offers um, premium and short form music content through its video service, and also targeting that to kids and also user generated content. And video sharing and social sharing is very important to Kakao Talk and WeChat. And we've seen how video is important driving the Facebook and Google ecosystems. But with these new forms of engagement and users turning to these apps, as their primary way into content and services, video is going to play a crucial role there as well. But content isn't the only story. The addition of commerce and money services, of having financial transactions within these apps, really shifts the dynamic of the mobile industry and helps OTT applications compete not just with operators, but also with application stores. Both OTT apps and application stores can offer scale of hundreds of millions or billions of users. They offer strong and compelling content lineups. They offer discovery tools to target, engage, and advertise content within the apps. But by encouraging users to spend money within the app, paying for physical goods, paying for commerce, or sending peer-to-peer -peer transactions, these OTT apps have captured one of the key elements in the mobile industry, and that is billing and monetization. So they take the billing details of the users and enable them to charge people outside the app stores where possible. A distribution that's still a question mark around 
uh, Apple and Google are very dominant in content distribution. But for other services, non-mobile services, the OTT apps are building very compelling platforms and services beyond the app stores and outside the app stores. Asian apps have taken a lead, as they did with content. With commerce, they're also taking a lead. China's WeChat offers a strong lineup of financial services, of payments for physical goods and services like taxis and commerce. Line offers a similar portfolio. It has peer-to-peer -peer payments, food delivery, taxi apps, all encouraging users to spend money in the app and helping monetization, which can then be built on for a bigger portfolio of services. Kakao Talk in Korea offers a similar portfolio. Western apps have been a bit more tentative. Um, Facebook and Snapchat have both added peer-to-peer -peer payment features in their messaging apps in the US in the last year or so. And these are really the first steps. It's not a fully-fledged monetization, monetization ecosystem, but it's laying the foundation, should they wish to, which can either enable monetization by paying for content and services, or also making the advertising that can be generated through, this app, through those apps much more profitable and much more valuable. Uh, Japan's Rakuten has made a slightly different strategy. Um, it, it offers a strong portfolio of content and services, of online commerce, of online content, video and music, and audio services. And it's opted to buy a messaging ecosystem. It bought Viber, the messaging and communications app, last year for $900 million. And it, mans it plans to make that the central identity, the central way in to its ecosystem. So with all of these companies offering such a variety of services, it can seem like everyone's trying to do everything. A device maker like Apple is active in commerce, communications, entertainment, games, music, even health and fitness. Google offers a similar portfolio of services. And Line, a messaging app, is active in many of these too. Mobile operators, having seen their communications revenues decline, often look to these verticals as ways of making more money, as ways of offsetting that decline. But it's important to remember for the top two companies there, their revenues really aren't in those verticals. It's from device sales and from advertising. So from anyone trying to compete with these companies in these mobile verticals, it can be very difficult to be profitable and to make money. Competition is coming from all sides and from very different business models. And we looked at the revenues of the OTT apps, and it's, you can't really measure the disruption by looking at their revenues. With global scales of hundreds of millions of users, they still, content and service companies, generate revenues of only around $10 or so users per, uh, $10 revenue per user per year. Device makers and operators can generate revenues of hundreds of dollars per year. But th that doesn't mean they're not under threat from these companies. It's just that revenues don't show the scale of the disruption. These ecosystems are also overlapping, particularly in Asia. It's not one company doing one thing. Companies are increasingly investing and partnering each other. China's Tencent is one of the key companies here. It's, it shares investments in companies with whom it competes. It's invested in taxi apps alongside Alibaba, with whom it competes in messaging, communications, and commerce. It shares an investment in a commerce platform, Wanda, with the search engine Baidu, who it competes with the competitive app store. It's also invested in a South Korean games company alongside its messaging app competitor, Line. And so it's not, it's not just working on your own. There's partnerships and investments with competitors as well. In Western markets, the landscape is slightly different. The dominance of Facebook and WhatsApp and their different advertising-focused business model means that it's evolving differently in the US and Europe. And so it might not have the same opportunity for these partnerships and content and commerce in the same way. So what does this all mean? Well, mobile disruption is increasing. And this disruption doesn't just affect the mobile industry. It affects adjacent industries and companies with very different business models. It can affect app stores, device makers, operators, content companies. But for content companies, there's also an opportunity. Users of messaging apps are increasingly difficult to engage with. They're particularly strong in emerging markets where the audience might be mobile first or mobile only. And these apps aren't replacing a previous media experience. They're the primary media content and services experience. So it's an opportunity which can't be ignored, even if monetization can be difficult. For device makers, the rise of these messaging app ecosystems can make differentiation more difficult. If you're providing, if an OTT app is providing a content and services experience that's the same on an Android device, on an iPhone, on a Windows device, it can be increasingly difficult to sell the differences of those platforms or devices. Commerce and payments are really critical to this monetization and ecosystem strategy. They've won, they're what's enabled mobile apps 
to really monetize users and own that experience beyond an app store, beyond an operator, beyond a device. And finally, going it alone is tough. These apps can't operate on their own. They're trying to occupy many different verticals, and partnerships will be necessary, both to enter new and adjacent markets, and also to enter new geographies and local markets where content and local content and local services are critical. If you want to launch a taxi app in a different country, you'll need a local partner, food delivery, local video content. They'll all be necessary. So partnerships are critical to this strategy as well.